From satisfying takedowns to displays of his indomitable spirit, Monkey D. Luffy has had some pretty hype moments in One Piece. And if there's one thing that's sure to get fans going, it's hearing our rubber boy declare a new gear. Ever since Luffy ate the so-called Gomu Gomu no Mi back in Fusha Village, turning the young lad into a bendy rubber boy, we had seen that this seemingly humble and wacky fruit, which under normal circumstances should have no place in intense combat situations, under the right circumstances, those being Luffy's wild and creative imagination, this unassuming fruit can serve as a huge benefit in combat in some of the most surprising and ingenious ways. And this has never been more true than in the context of Luffy's gear forms. But speaking of epic powers, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, the home to some of the coolest fighters in the mobile gaming universe. Now I'm sure you've heard of Raid already, but did you know these awesome facts that make Raid the awesome game that it is? Raid Shadow Legends has over 700 unique champions, 15 awesome factions, 12 terrifying dungeons to conquer, engaging PvP combat, regular content updates, the ability to play on both mobile and desktop, and endless customization. Which is why Raid has over 400 million players in over 190 countries. But if all of this isn't enough for you to join, I know what is. And that's my newest favorite champion, Sun Wukong, the legendary mischievous Monkey King. No, not this Monkey King, this Monkey King. King. And if you want to claim this new champion for free, all you have to do is log into Raid on 7 different days between 22nd of August to 23rd of October. No heroic journey across the seas or to the west required. With all of this exciting stuff and more coming to Raid, if you haven't started playing yet, then what are you waiting for? And for new players, and for a limited time only, you have a chance to get one of the best epic champions, Stag Knight, as well as a skin for him designed by John Tron himself. So just use the promo code JTSKIN before October 7th. Also, if you click my link or scan the QR code right here, you can get a free starter pack with this cool in-game loot. So come join, come find me under the name Joy Girl, join my clan, and we'll be legends together. Now getting back to our Monkey King. Year 2nd was first introduced in Ennius Lobby during Luffy's fight with CP9 member Bluno and represented the first major power-up that we witnessed since Luffy began sailing the seas. It's a technique that involves involves the power of the Gomu Gomu no Mi to enhance Luffy's speed and mobility by speeding up the blood flow in all or some of his body parts, more oxygen and nutrients are delivered, which has the effect of making him faster and more powerful. It also greatly increases his metabolic rate to the point that sweat on Luffy's body vaporizes so quickly that it makes it look like he is steaming while the increased blood flow makes his skin turn pink. Rob Lucci, one of the first opponents to witness Luffy using the attack, compared the process to doping, which is a real-world process of adding more blood blood cells to a body part to allow for greater delivery of oxygen and nutrients to enhance one's physical performance often seen amongst athletes. This technique is particularly fitting for a fighter like Luffy whose devil fruit ability gives his organs and blood vessels the property of rubber, thereby allowing them to expand and contract at much greater rates without tearing. Although first used against the Cypherpole agent, the creation of Gear Second came into motion from as early as his overwhelming defeat at the hands of the then Admiral Awakiji, after which Luffy realized that he needed a massive power boost if he was going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the monsters that existed in the Grand Line. Then, during Water 7, as he witnessed the overwhelming threat of the Cypherpole agents and their Rokushiki style, Luffy was able to incorporate some of their specialized attacks, in particular Soru that allows for superhuman speed, to upgrade his own combat skill and techniques. In fact, many of his Gear second attacks emulate his already familiar techniques, but in just much faster form. Gomu Gomu no Jet Pistol is an improved version of the iconic Gomu Gomu no Pistol where the use of Gear Second makes him so fast that Luffy's fist seemingly becomes invisible. In fact, many of Luffy's pre-timeskip usage of Gear Second are his regular attacks with Jet being placed in front of the name to signify its speed, including Jet Bazooka, Jet Bullet, and Jet Gatling. But this manipulation of the body doesn't come without consequences. As the technique uses more oxygen and nutrients, this means that his energy is equally being depleted at a rapid rate. Over a prolonged period, the strength and agility of this form reduces as his energy runs low. It was also said that ultimately, Gear Second would dramatically reduce Luffy's life force and lifespan as the rapid use of energy meant that Luffy was essentially starving his body. Luckily, Luffy has mastered Gear Second since then, and following the time skip, his use of the technique no longer affects him the way that it used to. He's become much more efficient in activating the technique, now able to swiftly pump blood into any of his body parts without the need to pump his whole body via his legs, as well as its use for quick short bursts of energy in single attacks rather than straight 
training his body for long periods. Also, after Luffy learned how to use armament Haki during the time skip, he's able to combine the two, giving birth to even stronger attacks. These attacks usually have names associated with the animal kingdom, reflective of the respect that Luffy has developed for the strength of animals after his training against them for two years. An example being the Gomu Gomu no Red Hawk, which is the enhanced version of the Jet Bullet, where armament Haki is used to harden his arm. This means that the increased speed and force is so great that it even causes Luffy's fist to ignite. The reveal of Gear Second will always be an iconic moment, and personally one of my favorites in the entire series. Aside from just how badass Luffy looks, this power-up also marked an important point of growth from Luffy, who recognized his own weakness and the need for improvement and managed to come up with an ingenious way to make use of his unconventional devil fruit to serve him in battle. An inspiring, much beloved moment all over the world, including by Greek athlete Militiades Tentoglu, who at the 2020 Summer Olympics paid homage to the Gear Second pose before he would go on to win the gold medal in long jump. Gear Third was developed alongside Gear Second and was similarly revealed in Enius Lobby shortly after our introduction to Gear Second. While fans weren't able to witness it until Luffy's fight with Luchi, Oda hinted at it at the end of Luffy's fight against Bluno, a technique that allows Luffy to inflate a part of his body to a much larger size by blowing into his bones. Gear Third closely resembles his regular technique, Gomu Gomu no Balloon, but the difference between the two is that Gomu Gomu no Balloon involves the inflation of Luffy's elastic skin and therefore makes him squishy and bouncy, whereas Gear Third is the inflation of his actual bones, thereby making him very hard. Given the nature of the technique, giving Luffy greater mass and strength, it's generally used in cases where raw physical strength is needed. However, the drawback to this technique is that his mobility is reduced, but more so than the cumbersome nature of the attack. The greater drawback is what happens upon deactivation. Gear Third is deactivated by heavily exhaling, which allows Luffy to expel all the air out from his limbs, but this also causes him to go into chibi mode. Luffy is shrunken down to a much smaller and weaker form, where he has very little strength and is unable to use his ability of stretching. His body is shrunken for roughly the same amount of time that he has spent activated in Gear Third, which means that the drawback isn't a great disadvantage if Luffy only uses the technique for very short periods such as for one attack. Of course, these drawbacks aren't an issue since the time skip at all, as Luffy has mastered his use of Gear Third. Now, Luffy is able to control where the air is stored within his limbs, such as solely in his fist, as opposed to the air being dispersed throughout his whole arm, thereby giving him greater speed and centralized force. It's also confirmed that he no longer shrinks into his chibi form after deactivating Gear Third. And similar to Gear Second, Luffy uses Gear Third in combination with Armament Haki to enhance the techniques such as when he used Gear Third and Haki to harden his arm and use it like a shield when defending himself against Fujitora's attacks. Also similar to Gear Second, Luffy's attacks in Gear Third form takes on a similar naming structure where his regular attacks just have Gigant, meaning giant, in front. For example, Gomu Gomu no Gigant Pistol, Gigant Rocket, Gigant Axe, and more. Whereas following the time skip and when these attacks are combined with Armament Haki, the naming scheme follows the animal theme such as Elephant Gun or Elephant Gatling. Luffy is also able to combine Gear Third into his Gear Second attacks, giving birth to insanely powerful attacks such as the Gomu Gomu no Red Rock, which is a combination of Elephant Gun and Red Hawk so that his fist is inflated, and while he activates Gear Second and Advanced Armament Haki, delivering a massive flaming punch. One strong enough to even knock down an injured Kaido, who even briefly caught on fire as a result. Gear Third is an impressive form for sure and inspiring too, such as for Italian athlete Massimo Stano, who paid homage to Luffy's Gear Third pose during his race before going on to take the gold medal at the Olympics. Gear Fourth is a technique that combines the powers of the Gomu Gomu no Mi and Armament Haki. Taking on different forms, each iteration enhances some aspect of physical ability, such as defense and durability, speed, or power beyond that of a natural human. Gear Fourth is activated similar to Gear Third, with Luffy blowing air into his body, but into his muscular structure instead of his bone, which on top of inflating his muscles, also makes him taller. He also extensively uses armament Haki to coat his limbs and torso, turning those body parts black from hardening. Similar to Gear Second, Luffy in Gear Fourth form is always emitting steam and develops smoke rings around him. The nature of Gear Fourth with his Devil Fruit ability adds explosive power and speed to Luffy's attacks as well as enhanced defensive capabilities. The combination of armament Haki and his rubbery body means that physical blows bounce off Luffy and can even be used as a counter-attack. However, this will depend on the strength of his opponent because for example against Kaido's Kanabo attack, rather than bouncing, Luffy was sent flying and rendered unconscious. Gear Fourth also takes multiple forms. The first is Boundman or Bounceman as called in English. Boundman is a form where Luffy's proportions become warped so that his body, particularly his upper body, body becomes much larger in size while his arm
arms, upper torso and legs are coated with armament haki. Due to this, Luffy is unable to stay still standing and so continuously bounces on the spot. Also, particularly with his earlier uses of the form, Luffy would be unable to control his landing and would bounce like a ball after using an attack. This form, however, gives him great strength and durability. Boundman is often used alongside the techniques of the Rokushiki, similar to Gear Second. For example, the high-speed movement bears resemblance to Soru, whereas Luffy's ability to kick the air in this form is reminiscent of Geppo. Although Boundman was first seen in Dressrosa against the Flamingo, Luffy actually developed this form during his training at Rukusaino. The next form we witness is Tankman, which Luffy was first and only seen using in Whole Cake Island against Charlotte Cracker. Perhaps because of the conditions required to transform into Tankman, where Luffy had to eat so many biscuits until he was completely full and use this Manpuku form. This form involves his torso inflating a great deal until Luffy is essentially a round ball while his arms inflate slightly. This form grants Luffy incredible durability, literally being able to tank and deflect attacks, even piercing strikes, which previously cut Luffy's boundment form. But perhaps the slickest of all his Gear 4 forms is Snake Man, which was revealed during his intense battle with Katakuri. Unlike his other Gear 4 forms, Luffy's body doesn't expand greatly, although his limbs and upper body do become slightly enlarged. This means that Luffy's defense capabilities are weaker than in Boundman or Tankman forms, but he's much more agile and faster, therefore a form more fitting for when he needs to go on the offensive. In fact, in Snake Man form, Luffy's able to use Python to change the direction of his attacks, which is something he's also able to do in Boundman, but in Snake Man, his attacks can continuously accelerate the longer that they last, meaning that Luffy is able to press an attack more fiercely and is able to increase speed and power until he's able to land a hit. In Snake Man form, the steam ring around his body becomes more gaseous like a mix of steam and fire. Overall, Gear 4 has a number of drawbacks. Initially, upon deactivation of Gear 4, Luffy would be left exhausted, barely able to move, and even unable to use Haki for 10 minutes due to it depleting his Haki reserves. Also, using Gear 4 twice in a row once left Luffy Luffy unconscious for three whole days. But Luffy has since developed better control over his use of Gear Forth and isn't always wiped out afterwards, as he's learned to deactivate the form himself rather than reaching the time limit to conserve his energy. Overall, Gear Forth marked a great leveling up for Luffy that demonstrated the immense training he underwent during the time skip. Like his post time skip Gear Second and Gear Third attacks, many of his Gear Forth attacks follow the animal theme in the attack names as a symbol of his time at Rusukaina, such as the Gomu Gomu no Kong Gun, meaning Monkey King Gun in English, which is the Gear Forth version of the Gomu Gomu no Bullet. For fans, Gear Forth was the first time witnessing a new gear in almost 10 years and truly marked Luffy's evolution while driving home the idea that he and the crew were facing different kind of beasts in the new world and therefore needed new and greater power-ups. Which is the most fitting way to take us to Gear 5th. Gear 5th is the most recent gear power-up that Luffy has obtained and boy is it a fun one. Having unlocked Gear 5th, at Wano, during his battle with Kaido of the Beasts, this level up completely shattered fans' understanding of Luffy's Devil Fruit and physics as a whole, as well as increasing the ever-growing lore of One Piece. Gear 5th involves the awakening of the Gomu Gomu no Mi, which turned out to be not the Gomu Gomu no Mi at all, because unbeknownst to Luffy, the Devil Fruit he ate all the way back in Chapter 1 in an unassuming bar at the humble Fusha village in East Blue was in fact the legendary Hito Hito no Mi model Nika. A mythical Zoan Devil Fruit that grants users the powers of the legendary Sun God Nika. It is said that the Nika Devil Fruit's power is limited only by the user's imagination while giving its user's body the property of rubber. Gear 5th allows the user's rubber-like body increased strength and freedom and allows them to fight in whatever way they please. Hence the user being known as the Warrior of Liberation, being able to bring joy and liberation to not only the user but also those around them. These features make it the most apt Devil Fruit for Luffy who is somewhat of a genius in his own kind of way, what with his wacky left field intuition and creativity. Proven when the battle with Kaido turned into a Looney Toony cartoon style fight that allowed Luffy to defy the laws of reality beyond what is already the case in a fictional manga, prompting Kaido to comment that it was like something out of a picture book. Apart from having a rubber-like body, the user can also extend this to anything he touches, such as when Luffy literally lifts the ground and seemingly changed the property of his enemy's body. For example, Luffy was even able to extend Kaido's body to this material when Kaido swallowed Luffy, causing Kaido's body to expand and inflate along with Luffy's. Luffy is also able to utilize Gear 5th alongside other gear techniques, such as inflating his limbs or muscles, which are the features of Gear 3rd and 4th, and it also expands on these techniques where the freedom associated with Gear 5th 
allows for expansion of Luffy's body like never before, increasing his size to gigantic proportions. In fact, Gear 5 generally seems to alter some inherent traits of Luffy's physicality more than we've seen of any of the other gears, such as Luffy's heartbeat taking on a drumming musical rhythm known as the Drums of Liberation, his hair and clothes also turning white, while his eyes glow red. Similar to the clouds of steam that form with Gear 4, Gear 5 causes white clouds to ring around Luffy's upper body. The Nika Devil Fruit had not been awakened in over 800 years, to the point that even some of the Gorosei had believed that its awakening was a legendary myth. Its true nature was hidden from the rest of the world, with its real name and features not being entered in any records. This awakening also revealed that Zoan Devil Fruits, particularly mythical Zoan types, have wheels of their own. And the Nika Devil Fruit has seemingly evaded the world government, finding the perfect host in Luffy. Indeed, the fact that it has been awakened is now a big concern for the world government, who had been highly coveting the incredibly strong fruit with endless possibilities. But this power-up doesn't make Luffy invulnerable, as Luffy is still shown to be vulnerable to slashing attacks. The use of Gear 5 also leaves Luffy exhausted and takes an extreme toll on his body after its usage. In fact, his appearance turned into that of an old man after using Gear 5 against Kaido. But I'm sure that with continued use and development, Luffy will find a way around these drawbacks in no time as he continues getting stronger and stronger on his journey to become the Pirate King. Perhaps even unlocking a new gear form in the final saga. But what do you think? Which of these gear forms is your favorite? What do you think will be his next gear if he does indeed unlock another gear form? Let me know by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you for listening to another one of my ramblings. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon.